welcome to epg patshala today i am going to talk to you about the educational views of jiddu krishnamurthy i am manjunath working as a lecturer in sociology in the department of pre university education bangalore this module of jiddu krishnamurthy is a part of the course of education and society in the subject of sociology Jiddu Krishnamurthy was an educational philosopher. He has written extensively on issues of education in general and the overall personality development of children in particular. According to him, education is not just about preparing a child for some part of life, but it is a process in which a child is prepared for an entire lifetime of learning. His views on education are integrated with the ideas on life humanity and world he had a holistic understanding of education that is the reason why his concerns for education have great contemporary relevance in his view the right kind of education is concerned with individual freedom which alone can bring true cooperation with the whole j krishnamurthy's educational ideas cannot be separated from his overall thoughts he attended to all day to day educational problems with a deep understanding and insights his educational understanding of education include ideas such as intentions of education physical nature of the places of education and others which are explained in detail in this module Jiddu Krishnamurthy was born in 1895 in the small town of Madras Presidency. His father Jiddu Narayan had worked as an official in the British administration. The childhood of Krishnamurthy was not an easy one. His experiences with the theosophical society had a deep impact on his thinking. He did not belong to any religious organization or sect nor did he adhere to any political ideology. Throughout his life Krishnamurthy traveled extensively talking about the need for bringing about a radical change in human beings the intentions of education Krishnamurthy frequently stated the intentions of educational centers he founded in very unequivocal terms and religious terms he was of the view that children must be rightly educated so that they become religious human beings according to krishnamurthy these centers of education indicate a way of life which is not based on the goal of achieving pleasure the emphasis must be on the understanding of right action building meaningful relationships and the sacredness of religious life these centers of learning exist as krishnamurthy says for the enlightenment of human beings in his own words surely they must be centers of learning a way of life which is not based on pleasure on self centered activities but on the understanding of correct action the depth and beauty of relationship and the sacredness of religious life he always criticized the kind of education which merely fulfills the objective of obtaining a degree or a job using knowledge only for self satisfaction he never felt that education is to be seen as a mechanism for thrusting a lot of information on the child education is usually taken to be an organized purposive activity with pre established goals his view that truth is a pathless land it cannot be organized provides a base for rethinking the very goal of education he located education in the active existential living present and considered it as a cooperative exploration by the teacher and student the real intention of education is to achieve freedom and the overall transformation of society here krishnamurthy uses freedom as more of an inner aspect of human beings rather than being political in nature both parents and teachers 
need to give students the freedom to choose their future options education is not meant to cultivate a technical competencies but its primary focus must be on the making people realize the true value of freedom in the modern world most often educational institutions concentrate on technical realms in which pupils mechanically learn without thinking of consequences this in turn leads to destruction and does not do good to humanity he sees education not with the eyes of a reformer or as a means to serve this or that end but as an intrinsic self fulfilling experience requiring no further justification the function of education he said is to bring out a mind that will not only act in the immediate but go beyond a mind that is extraordinarily alive not with knowledge not with experience but alive more important than making the child technologically proficient is the creation of the right climate in the school for the child to develop fully as a complete human being this means giving him the opportunity to flower in goodness so that he is rightly related to people things and ideas to the whole of life the second aspect the physical nature of places of education krishnamurti has also laid emphasis on the physical nature of educational centers in his philosophical understanding of education krishnamurti focused his attention on the three aspects of physical nature of educational center all the schools started by him are known for their pleasing physical ambience which is serene and aesthetically appealing a pleasing school environment is not just about beauty but aesthetically appealing surroundings are necessary for proper development of a child's personality krishnamurti connected aesthetics to religion he expected his staff to develop an appreciation for beauty and always ensured that they adhered to this rule in the designing of educational centers krishnamurti gave a pivotal place to nature he felt that relationship with nature had a significant impact on the development of a child's personality his schools are mostly located in the countryside and places close to nature krishnamurti insisted that each educational center must have special areas to maintain silence and religiosity he often spoke to the students of the importance of a quiet mind and silence so that they could concentrate on their thoughts he used to tell his students you see meditation means to have a very quiet still mind not a chattering mind to have a really quiet mind so that your mind becomes religious he was of the opinion that mind of a religious man is a very quiet sane rational logical and one needs such a mind he emphasized that such special places must be in the center of educational institutions rather than in the periphery apart from the atmosphere created by the aesthetics and special areas in educational institutions krishnamurti says that at least a part of the atmosphere must be created by the participants themselves this atmosphere is another link in understanding the religiousness of education a place may carry an atmosphere but it is the people who create it or destroy it to illustrate this he would cite places that at one time were known to have had a very special and powerful atmospheres but which were destroyed through neglect incompetence and corrupt behavior krishnamurti noted that there are two categories of participants in education staff and students he perceived staff as those who are in regular contact with educational environment if not directly with students he used to say that every function of the staff 
however small it may be was very significant for the growth of a child he distinguished the participants of education from the participants of any other organization such as hospitals police etc the single reason he gives for such uniqueness being seen in the participants of education is their religious fervor attitude and behavior which stand distinct in a educational setting in the j krishna murthy model of education there was no hierarchical order in which staff and students were placed however there were some differences among them with regard to their experience and responsibilities though he laid emphasis on the need for religious fervor in education he maintained that the participants in this system do not belong to any clan sect or to an organized religion it is evidently pertinent that staff had some authority over certain parts of educational activities such as for example administration or gardening however the major goal of education is to achieve inner liberation and freedom krishnamurthy repeatedly pointed out that both staff and students are learners and therefore both are equal he noted that authority has its place as knowledge but there is no spiritual authority under any circumstances that is authority destroys freedom but the authority of a doctor mathematics teacher and how he teaches that doesn't destroy freedom when discussing the selection process for students and staff at his english educational center krishnamurthy always stressed the importance of the candidates being their deepest sensitivities goodness and intelligence and the depth of their questions about themselves and the world although he wanted both staff and students to be intellectually sound he never stressed academic prowess cultural abilities or capacities as being more important than the willingness and ability to lead what he called a religious life in one memorable discussion krishnamurthy questioned the staff about all the qualities they looked for in prospective students he then described himself as a boy he said he had been vague shy dreamy and bad in academics but sensitive full of wonder trusting and affectionate he would want to know from his teachers if according to the criteria they had just enunciated they would have accepted him as a child krishnamurthy's point of view was that education is fundamentally the art of learning not only from books but from the whole cycle of life a student has to learn about the nature of the intellect its dominance its activities its vast capacities and its destructive power learning is not from a book but from the observation of the world about people without theories prejudices and values krishnamurthy writes about the method of education in the following passage if one really has something to say the very saying of it creates its own style but learning a style without inward experiencing can only lead to superficiality likewise people who are experiencing and therefore teaching are the only real teachers and they too will create their own technique to him schooling was without competition and comparison when a is compared to b who is clever bright assertive that very comparison destroys a this destruction takes the form of competition of imitation and conformity to the patterns set by b this breeds antagonism jealousy anxiety and even fear and this becomes the condition in which a lives for the rest of his life krishnamurthy's views on education clearly indicate that he gave a prime place to freedom and order in the teaching learning process he laid great stress on values such as punctuality kindness generosity and fearlessness one has to discover 
discipline through the practice of these values by avoiding constraint one does not become free there is need to develop clarity of perception which is in essence from self only respect for freedom could lead to development of healthy relationships to conclude that krishnamurti is essentially a philosopher of education his teachings had a core concern for education he also finds a place as an important educational thinker in courses on educational theory and philosophy the educational issues raised by krishnamurti like place of knowledge in education freedom and discipline learning from nature role of sensory experience and observation comparison and competition are of such abiding concern that they have been discussed by several educational thinkers in the past and continue to hold contemporary relevance he dealt with issues pertaining to education not just as being part of mechanical teaching learning process but as concerns that had to be addressed if a meaningful system of education had to be evolved his educational thoughts provide a framework for revisiting methodologies of outcomes of the present system of education krishnamurti's writings talks and reflections on education have also generated a lot of thinking on various aspects of schooling teaching and learning